Hey gang, I'm at Glenwood Cemetery in downtown Houston area, the north side, and it is just a spectacular place. I also went to, we're, we're going to do the, the walk and talk about Jean Tierney, famous actress, and I also did the episode of a very long and deep dive talk on Howard Hughes. I don't know which one's going to come first. But I got to tell you, when I did the Howard Hughes, as I was walking right at the beginning, I looked and I see Gene Tierney's grave and I said, all right, we're going to come back and do that. And right on cue. <laughs> I'm not going to cut this out. I have, it always happens to me. Steve, are you watching? The Weed Whackers. Anyway, let's get on with this walk and let's walk. Let's get away from these guys. All right. They follow me. And let's walk to let's walk to the grave of Gene Turney as this amazing family plot. And by the way, I just want you to see this real quick. That was behind me. This family. Sternenberg. Look at that angel. I don't want to walk on the family plot. Now let's go this way. We gotta get away from these guys. They're just warming up. They're just warming up their little concert for us, and we will pass our tickets back in and come back another time for to see their show. Anyway, so, Gene Eliza Tierney was born November 19, 1920 in Brooklyn, New York. Her father's name was Howard, mother, Belle. She had an elder brother, Howard Jr., and a younger sister, Pat. Dad was an insurance broker. Mother was a physical education teacher, a gym teacher. They moved to Westport, Connecticut when the kids were very young. Jean would grow up there. That's where her formative years would be spent. Now she reached teens. She went to Europe for a couple of years and she went to a very famous school, the Brilliant Mont international school which is where she learned to speak fluent French. She returned to the US in 1936 and attended a school called Miss Porter's, Miss Porter's School. It was in Farmington, Connecticut. And it was when the family took a trip to LA that they went to check out Warner Brothers Studios. It's where her mother's cousin Gordon Hollingshead, he worked there as a producer. He was doing historical shorts. And the very noted director, Antoli Litvak, was taken by the 17-year-old's beauty. And he said, you need to become an actress. You are going to be famous someday. So they wanted to sign Jean to a contract, but her parents were against it. They said the salary's too low. Well, Jean would get home and she would study acting for the theater at an acting studio in New York, and then she would go on to Broadway, and that's where she would really start, on Broadway. Her first role on Broadway was to carry a bucket of water across the stage in what was called What a Life. And there was a magazine, Variety Magazine critic, who said, Miss Tierney is certainly the most beautiful water carrier that I've ever seen. Columbia Pictures signed her to a six-month contract in 1939, and that's where she met Howard Hughes. Speaking of Howard Hughes, whose story we did, and of course, guess what? He tried to seduce her. No luck, buddy not like the other actresses. She was not going for it. She was not impressed by his wealth. I mean, she came from a wealthy family. This was, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? I love it. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. But she would meet a man named Oleg Cassini, very famous fashion designer. When she was 20, they would run off and elope. And they'd have two daughters, Antoinette, Daria, 1943, and later in 1948, Christina. Now, while 
Jean was pregnant with Daria, she contracted this type of measles. I think it was from a fan. It's called rubella. You know, when she was out and about, maybe signing autographs. And Antoinette Daria was born prematurely. She was only three pounds, two ounces, and she needed a couple of blood transfusions. And sadly, the disease caused cognitive damage. She was deaf, partially blind, with cataracts, and she was severely mentally disabled. And this would just be the start for what was a a very tough life. Now she was institutionalized for most of her life. Jean and Oleg ended up separating in October 1946. They stayed amicable. Divorce wasn't finalized until March of 1948, but they would reconcile before them and it would go on, but they'd finally divorce in 1952. Now, during their separation in 46, she met the magnetic John F. Kennedy, who at the time, we're talking about the PT-109 World War II veteran. And he was visiting the set of the filming for the movie Dragonwick. And, as you could imagine, they began a romance. And I'm a big JFK aficionado. I, I, I mean, he's, he was amazing. <laughs> but I mean, come on, you got to give it to him. But the Marilyn Monroe, the this guy was right, right there with Howard Hughes. You know, who's who's first with the ladies? Holy cow! Jean Tierney. So where she passed up Howard Hughes. She's like, hey, this JFK guy, he's, he's a pretty intriguing guy. However, the romance ended the following year because of the political and, well, we'll call it religion. I mean, JFK said he couldn't marry her. He was, you know, he was going in to be the big, you know, he was going to be big. He had those big ambitions. In politics so you know it just it just couldn't work out she was doing well in the films she got top billing in the comedy heaven can wait 1943 and what became her best remembered role the title role in Otto Preminger's film noir Laura 1944 she had a lot of other triumphs in film, of course, she won an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. 20th Century Fox's most successful film of the 1940s, Leave Her to Heaven, adapted from the novel. She was called the most beautiful woman in movie history, and many of her movies in the 40s became classic films. And we are right behind the office, the historic office here. Let's walk this way. She started smoking. Now let's talk about, you know, behind the scenes. You know, a lot of the actors were all puffing it one after another. And it was changing her voice, actually for the positive. She thought she sounded like an angry Minnie Mouse. So she's like, well, the more smoking I do, the deeper my voice gets. So she was a heavy smoker. She also struggled for years with episodes of manic depression. Jean consulted a psychiatrist at one point. She was admitted to the hospital in New York there and later she went to the Institute of Living in Hartford, Connecticut after some 25 shock treatments. Remember the shock treatments we always talk about? She got 27 of them. So if that didn't 
you know, if that didn't mess her up by then. Some children here. Oh no, mother and father. 1896. So she took some time off. She had a, an incident where she was 14 stories up in a building. And she stayed up there like on the ledge for 20 minutes until they talked her down. So it's like we've got to get her out of here. She did some more films. She did make a comeback after taking a break. And it was while filming for the movie called Personal Affair in Europe, she began a romance with Prince Ali Khan. They became engaged in 1952 while Khan was going through a divorce from Rita Hayworth. <laughs> and their marriage plans didn't make it though. They were the father, you know, the parents, no way, did not work out. They put a quash on that. In 1958, she met the oil baron, W. Howard Lee, whose family plot we are going to. And uh, uh, interestingly, he was married to actress Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr, my favorite actress. Hedy Lamarr and Lee divorced in 1960. They had this horrible battle with the alimony, you know, all that money, oil baron. So Lee and Jean would be married in Aspen, Colorado, finally, on June 11th of 1960. And they lived here in Houston. And they also spent time in Delray Beach, Florida, until he died in 1981. So we're approaching their crypt here. And this is, amazingly, this is, this is where I started. The Howard Hughes episode right behind, right at, right at this point. So we got to see a good, good part of the cemetery here. Beautiful place. And let's, let's pay respects to Gene Turney. Right up front, this is probably one of the most prominent places here in the cemetery. Now, if you look off here, there's the cityscape, Houston. And right beyond that, you see, you probably can see the water spray. Big pond there, overlook. Yeah, this is the, the spot. A lot of folks here, a lot of Lees. And I'm sure there are a lot of descendants still to this day. Well, Jean Tierney is right over here. And she already has flowers. I did not bring flowers. I saw the flowers, so we'll just leave it be. Jean Tierney Lee. November 19th, 1920. And there you see the, the motion picture camera. And November 6th, 1991. Here we see daughters Daria, Antoinette, and Christina. Right here. And then there's a son. I'm not sure who that is. Well, beautiful woman. Tough life. Rest in peace, Jean Tierney Lee. Rest in peace.